Real quick, who is this an impression of? This is gonna tell me how deep down the rabbit hole you've gone on YouTube. Anybody know? Hello everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to try and help your game as I've done now for the last couple of years here on YouTube. I appreciate all the support that I get from everybody who watches this channel, people who have followed me since the beginning, and all the newcomers. If you are a newcomer and you've never seen my channel or any of my videos before, this is the very first time that you're watching any of my content. Here you go in a nutshell. I am not a professional. I'm not a golf coach, a teacher. I'm not certified in anything. I'm not a supreme high level golfer either, but I'm trying to find better golf like so many of you out there and I tend to overthink everything. I've traveled down a lot of bad paths with golf and found myself at a dead end and had to come all the way back to the beginning and start over. I'm trying to be your guinea pig, your canary in the coal mine, your golf test dummy. I've put myself through all kinds of paces, drills, different swing techniques, all kinds of different approaches to the game over the course of the last two or three years. Some are on video, some are not. I've read lots of things, I've watched lots of things, I've taken lots of advice from different people. I talked about Manuel De La Torre in a couple of my last videos, and now I'm moving on to somebody else to share a little nugget of wisdom, some of the best advice, some of the best thoughts and things that I think have real value from different instructors and different readings and different tests that I've done over the last couple of years to share them with you and also employ them in my game to try and make the simplest, best, repeatable, consistent swing that I can with very little effort and very little brains involved. All right, so continuing on, we're gonna move on to another great piece of information today. The number one takeaway that I had from this guy right here, Count Yogi. Five Simple Steps to Perfect Golf. This book is old, it is expensive, it is hard to find copies of, and when you do, you will pay for it. I had a very good friend out in Los Angeles that sent me a copy of that book because we're very big fans of Count Yogi. Now, on to the number one thing that I think that I took away from my studies and my dive into the Count Yogi lore. Just straighten this out. It was pretty much confirmed in that book. Before I got that book, I had done all kinds of research. Uh, some of the uh, teachings of Count Yogi and things like that are a little bit uh, hard to come by. They're, they're almost cryptic, and there's not a whole lot of it out there. But he always said that he, he played mental golf, that he, he didn't think about mechanics. He didn't think about physical anything, except that he wanted to look elegant. That was his only real physical thought uh, that he gave to his body, right? So I'm always saying that I, I just don't feel like concentrating on the movements of the body and trying to micromanage these throughout the swing is the way to go for most of us out there, and it certainly is not the way to go for me. I have found far better results thinking about the club or thinking about the target, trying to be external more than I have trying to focus on what my body's doing. And Yogi said that his, his greatest strength, that he always played mental golf, but I was like, okay, how did you do that though? I mean, what, what actually could, could we learn from that? And it, instead of just copying, as I did the impression at the beginning of the video, you could try and copy his swing and maybe you get some good results with that, maybe you don't. But instead, maybe you can copy what he's doing, but in your own way, give it your own spin. And I think that I do just that. And I've been playing a lot better golf lately and I'll kind of walk you through what I'm doing with that, how I'm applying, that nugget of Count Yogi to myself. Count Yogi had a very distinctive and a very unique pre-shot routine. And he called these the five simple steps. He actually counted them off. And he could tell you each one of these steps and he repeated them every single time. Now, I don't play like Count Yogi. I don't do an impression of him on the course. I don't go through his routine specifically, but I think you can tailor this to yourself. If you are hitting really good shots most of the time, you probably don't need to change your pre-shot routine. But if you find yourself being inconsistent, some days you're really great and then others you're straight trash, maybe, just maybe, you can find a way to almost hypnotize yourself into playing good golf. I think that what he was doing was actually a form of self-hypnosis. So when I go through my pre-shot routine, let's say I've already selected my club, I've selected my shot shape, I know where my target is, and via Sean Clement 
and a lot of other teachers, I choose an intermediate target in front of the golf ball. That helps me to line my body up. Now my routine is after I've chosen that spot, I step around to it. All right, so now I'm gonna go through the process of letting my body set up to that intermediate point in the golf ball, that line there. Also, I'm gonna pick out the spot on the ground inside of that. It's almost an intermediate, intermediate point. But this time, that's gonna be where the bottom of my swing is. So I'm setting up to where I want the club to bottom out, which low point control is huge. It's huge. So many people are really good golfers because they can control the low point of their golf swing and then they move that low point around, whether you're on a tee or you're on the ground or you're in a bunker, whatever the shot may be, they choose that low point. Once I find that low point, which with an iron off a turf, which is what I have right now, I'm gonna put it about an inch and a half to two inches in front of the golf ball. Now I'm just gonna kind of set up to Once it. Once I do that, then it's just a matter of relaxing into it and realizing that I'm going to swing the club and focus on the swing of the club itself and not me, not my physical body, but the club. If I focus on the implement and the target, then I get great results. So I set up to it and I feel like, yep, I'm gonna be able to throw it right through there and bottom out about two inches in front of the golf ball and I'm ready to go. And you get solid contact more often than not. It's been working real well for me. And that is almost a form of self-hypnosis to do the same thing over and over. Now they say that doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is insanity. So what's the opposite of that? What is complete sanity? To do the same thing over and over again and expecting the same result. So once you find a routine that works for you and you see, oh, that was such a great strike. That was a really good ball. Let me go through the same routine again and if it continues to work, then it could work for you and you know you're onto something. You know that you have a good pre-shot routine. And then once you put yourself into that self-hypnosis to a sort of state, once you step up there, you're in a comfort zone. You've seen it, you've practiced it, you've got it down. I know that if I come in and I do this same thing every time, all right, here we go. One, two, three, and swing away. Whatever your routine is, you know that if you do that over and over, you should expect the same results and that should be sanity. Go through one more here. My routine and Count Yogi's routine. First I'll start out with the Yogi impression. He kind of stepped up like this, his chest and his body, he was almost standing at attention and he would take the club into his hands and he would look at the scoring line of the club. Next he would sort of make this little motion to where he would take the club toward the target and almost point it at his target like Babe Ruth calling his shot. From there, he would step in, one, club behind the ball, two, left foot out, three, right foot back, four, take the club away, five, return the club to whence it came and swing up on the golf ball. To an elegant, balanced finish every time at the target. I'm behind the ball, got my intermediate target, now it's time to walk into the shot. I'm gonna set the club behind the ball first. Then I'm gonna just kinda of open my stance up to where it feels comfortable, and I feel like everything that I'm doing now it, with my body, with the golf club, is all dictated by the one true intention, which is to make my club bottom out two inches in front of the golf ball and have my club swing and support the club's swing with my body through that intermediate point out toward the target. Set in, put my mind and my eyes on that spot two inches in front of the ball and let the club swing while I support it. I mean, it's just laced. It's solid contact. Count Yogi had a perfect mental routine that allowed his brain and his body to get into that zone. You've all heard about the zone. To get into that zone of comfort and performance to where he could play and perform at a high level over and over and over for decades. All right, all right, one more Count Yogi impression. This time, I'll take my impression one step further. Here you go. All right, you look at the scoring lines on your club, you take your grip on the club, you look at your target, you step in, one. Set the club behind the ball. Left foot out, two. Right foot back three, take the club away, four, five, swing and be bodily perfect. 
All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I've had a hard day at work. I've had a hard couple of last weeks at work. I'm worn out and I haven't even eaten dinner yet. I just came out here to make this video. I know I missed posting Sunday. I'm really sorry. I've been super busy, but I definitely wanted to get this video out to you this Wednesday. I really appreciate all the support I'm getting from you guys. Thanks so much for sticking around with me. I'll have more coming. I told you I was going to work on a video for tempo and timing and rhythm and addressing all that stuff and what I've been doing lately to do with that. And again, it goes back to some of the best things that I've learned from my endeavors here for the last couple of years. I'll see you in the next video.